Hello everyone, my name is Ben and I teach people about the anatomy of lifting. Today we're going to go over the differences between the narrow grip pull down and the wide grip pull down. Which one of them is better? What should you do and why? Well, if we compare these two things, first we need to look at the anatomy of the back and specifically we need to understand how the differences between muscles actually manifest in these different variations. And then we also need to understand how physics plays a role in what the recruitment of these different muscles will be. So first things first, these are the two different variations we're ultimately comparing, at least on a general level. This is kind of what they look like, right? Many of you are probably familiar with doing a narrow grip pull down and doing a wide grip pull down. But if we go to Google and we ask like, hey, what's the difference between these variations, it kind of gives this really vague, generalized, nebulous answer of, well, uh, if you want to increase the width of your back, you should choose the wide grip. And then if you want to improve the thickness of your back, uh, do the narrow grip. And that's not really helpful because it doesn't tell us anything about which muscles are being recruited because ultimately we want our backs to be wide and we want them to be thick and all the muscles can really contribute to the width and the thickness regardless of which variation that you do. Now, before we jump into the anatomy, something that I think is really interesting is this comment by Dorian Yates. And for those of you who don't know, Dorian Yates is one of the best bodybuilders ever to live of all time. And he basically said that he really only did narrow grip pull downs to build his lats. And I think there's some clues to be had there. So just for starters, what I categorize as the main back muscles, the main pulling muscles are number one, the rear delts, which are sort of this triangle, which sits off of the scapula here, right? All along this border, they attach to the back side of the upper arm, the lats, which many of you are very, very familiar with probably, which attach all along the spine, all the way down to the hips, the fascia of the lats are not shown here, but they run to the hips, um, down to the back of the tailbone and the side of the spine the rhomboids which sit right here between the actual spine itself and the scapula the traps which run all the way from the upper traps to the middle traps to the lower traps and then the teres major here which is actually much bigger than most people think so these are really the muscles that constitute the back aside from the spinal extensors and these are the ones that we have to talk about when actually trying to differentiate between narrow grip pull downs and wide grip pull downs so this perspective is helpful but it's limiting and why is it limiting well because to understand anatomy anatomy occurs in a 3D context, right? We're human beings walking around. We're not these 2D creatures that can be simplified down to a two-dimensional image. And when we look at the anatomy specifically of the lats from this perspective, we start to gain a very different understanding and a different picture of what their function might actually be. So let's break down the differences between the narrow pull down and the wide pull down now from a physics perspective. And let's talk about which would lead more to lat recruitment and which would lead more to upper back recruitment. And when I say upper back and lats, what I'm really differentiating between is obviously the lats are here as we just discussed of this whole broad span of attachments. But when we talk about the upper back, really what I'm referring to are the rear delts here, the rhomboids here, and the teres major here. And why am I really only referring to these as opposed to the traps? Well, because in the context of a pull down, the traps actually do not contribute very much to a pull down, regardless of which of the traps you're talking about. And this is because the traps actually take the scapula, which I'm drawing here in this triangle, and they rotate it upwardly. So whether we're talking about the upper traps, the middle traps, or the lower traps, they all basically pull at an angle which rotates the scapula upward. And when we're talking about the context of a pull down, we're actually talking about the reverse of this, meaning that instead of upwardly rotating the scapula in this direction, a pull down requires us to rotate the scapula in this direction. So regardless of what pull down motion you're doing, the traps are not going to be substantially involved. The difference is really, does the pull down recruit these rhomboids, this teres major and this rear delt more, or does it recruit more of the lats? And my contention here will be that as Dorian mentioned, the narrow grip pull down will be much more specific to the lats and the wide grip pull down will be more specific to the rear delts, the rhomboids, and then the teres major. So if we first look at the specifics of the narrow grip pull down, here's kind of what it looks like and here's the appropriate perspective through which we can actually look at this motion. And what you'll notice is that when the arm is in front of the body, as is demonstrated here, we have to initiate the motion almost immediately with a sort of downward trajectory, right? And so what that means is that when the arm is in front of the body, we are always having to manage a straight vertical downward force and assuming the resistance is overhead as in any sort of pull down variation what this essentially means is that because the lats are going to run in this more vertical direction they're going to contribute more to moving the arm straight downward this way so the physics here are very simple right it's if you keep your arm in front of your body immediately what you have to start to do is you have to start to pivot your arm downward in a vertical direction just think about it very simply however when we're looking at a wide grip pull down what you'll notice is that to initiate motion of the pull down downward we 
actually need to move the arm outward rather than downward immediately. Of course, it will start to move downward and then closer to the body as we get toward the bottom of the pull down. And because the direction of resistance of a pull down is always vertical, the lats will still have to do plenty of work. But the difference here is that out of the top of the pull down and specifically as we move downward toward the bottom, the arm actually has to pivot outward as opposed to downward. And so the initiation of the wide grip pull down is actually something that is more toward the sides rather than something that is directly downward toward our hips. And because the wide grip pull down, we have to initiate in this outward direction, it will not immediately start to call upon the lats, which again are these vertical movers. They're the, they're the bustle groups that basically manage the vertical direction much more specifically. So if we're moving our arms in more of a vertical direction from the beginning to the end of the entire motion throughout the entire range, what we're going to end up recruiting more of are not so coincidentally the tissues which act more in the vertical direction. But when we go over here and we look at our wide grip pull down again, again, the arm needs to traverse outward before it really starts to move downward. And this is what will start to create more of a favor toward the upper back tissues, again, the rear delts, the rhomboids, and the teres major, as opposed to the lats. Now, when we make this comparison side by side, does that mean that just because we are initiating motion of the arm outward here and then straight downward here, that the lats are not going to play a role in this variation and the upper back aren't going to play a role in this variation? No, there's always going to be some kind of trade off because both groups of muscles do both things. But when we're looking at the context of being more specific about what we're trying to target, this variation here, the wide grip variation, because of the motion being outward initially, and because of this motion being downward initially, this motion here will be more of an upward and downward motion. And this will recruit a little bit more of a side to side direction, uh, again, in those upper back tissues. So again, if we look at this perspective that we had initially, and you imagine that the arms are sort of upward this way, right out of the gate, this person has to start to recruit their lats to drive their arm downward toward their hips. But because their arms are wider in this particular position, they won't start to bring their arms in front of their body. In other words, they won't immediately start to have to bring their arms downward. What they'll have to do is they'll have to sort of pull them outward again, as I illustrated in this photo here. And so what we can essentially conclude between the wide grip and the narrow grip pull down is that the wide grip pull down will recruit a greater proportion of the rear delts, the rhomboids and the teres major, and the narrow grip pull down will recruit more of the lats, all of the upper lats and all of the lower lats together. So if your muscle goals are more specific to recruiting the lats, which again, run in this more vertical direction, I would go with the narrow pull down. And if your muscle goals are more specific to the upper back, again, the rear delts, the rhomboids and the teres major, I would go with the wider grip pull down. Both pull downs are ultimately viable options to include in your program. And it's likely that including both of them at some point during your training week is a good idea to make sure that you're targeting all of the muscles of the back and so that you're not overemphasizing one portion of the back at the expense of another. If you like this content and you want to learn more from me, you definitely need to check out the Modern Meathead community. Inside the community, you'll get direct access to me for one-on-one -on -one personalized feedback. In addition, you'll get access to hundreds of hours of premium content exclusive to members only. When you get inside the community, you'll get direct access to all these different features. Now, I make daily posts covering different exercises where I post videos of exercises directly, the anatomy of those exercises, and very specific breakdowns relative to whatever the goals of that exercise are. In addition, members are posting things every day with comments and questions of their own. And what you can see is as we go through all of these different kinds of posts, I respond to everything, every question, every comment directly, and I'll give direct feedback in the comment section as to all the different exercise variations you post. In addition, when you look over to the left side of your community, we have all these different community forms, but you'll also get access to all these different courses that I have on biomechanics, programming, pain-free training, as well as coaching and queuing. And when you click into the course, you'll see your videos on the left and then all the different other videos of the course on the right side. In addition, you'll also get access to an exercise library where I'm constantly adding new exercises, basically everything that I film in the gym with step-by-step -step tutorials. You'll also get access to previous Q&A recordings that I do on Instagram and live in the community, as well as all these other specific member lectures, which can last from 30 minutes to an hour every single week. You'll also get access to premium articles, eBooks, and all of my training programs with just one subscription. So if you want to learn more about the anatomy of lifting and a community of like-minded individuals who are all lifting obsessed, you can start your seven-day free trial, zero risk subscription today.